Okay, good morning everyone in Facebook Live and here in the Zoom uh, meeting. This morning is the 26th of September, 2021. And we are going to listen to our good friend from Ecuador, Tania Cajamarca. Thank you, Tania, for giving us part of your Sunday morning time and, and for getting a little bit your family. So thank you so much. Thank you, Maria Teresa in Bolivia, Raj in Canada, Jose Lobo in Colombia, and Liliana and Catherine, I don't know where. As usual, let me show you uh, a little bit of a little bit of information. Uh, okay, uh, international English online meetings were born last year because of the pandemic, and uh, as usual, because the topic today is reading, I I found these quotes about reading. So, Raj, could you please give me a hand reading out the first one? Okay. And, and yeah, a book is a gift you can open again and again and again, and you can go out and buy and buy and buy. That's what. We do. <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, and you will never stop, right? Right, and okay. I like the good books. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, Maria Teresa. Could you help us with the next one? That's the thing about books; they let you know. I, I'm sorry, they they let you travel without moving your feet. Oh. I think. This is absolutely true. Since you can go through different places, just going with the books as far as you want. And just let me tell you that now we are having the book fair here in La Paz, Bolivia. And it's uh, after uh, two years actually that we uh, have this uh, fair where you can share or find lots of different kinds of books. Really thanks, interesting. Thanks a lot, Maria Teresa, for the info. And the last one, uh, Jose Lobo, could you please help us with the last one, Jose? Mm -hmm. Yes. Reading is dreaming with open eyes. So how often, so how often do you dream with open eyes, Jose? <laughs> um, every day <laughs> very good <laughs> very good well if you watch if you want to watch all the meetings you can find them in Jaime and Kajima teacher training youtube channel as usual who is presenting soon well in our next uh in our next meeting we are going to have a beautiful round table with coordinators and directors of lengua inglesa programs and the topic is teaching English in Latin America. We will have Mercilinda Ortiz from Guatemala, Andrea Scanetti from Argentina, Maria Teresa Teran, who is present this morning. Thank you so much from Bolivia, Gladys Arias from Colombia, uh, Jose Obando from Ecuador, Marco Aparicio from Mexico. And then we will have uh, Jose Lobo from Colombia, and then uh, Roxy Tenorio from Peru. Then Mauricio Arango from Colombia, Alastair Grant from England, who lives in Buenos Aires, Argentina, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and, and, and then what's this? Ah, yeah. Silvina and Rocio from Argentina, no, from Colombia and Argentina, will be talking about growth mindset for educators. Mm. And closing our um, 2021 international meetings, Marina Gonzalez from Argentina. And this morning we have our beautiful and very intelligent speaker from Ecuador, Tania Cajamarca. Let me say a few words about her. Tania Anabel Cajamarca Alvear graduated from the University of Cuenca with a bachelor's degree in science education and a master's degree in curriculum and instruction from Kansas State University, the USA. She has 16 years of experience as an English instructor. She has worked at a variety of private and public institutions. She has also taught at various levels ranging from kindergarten to university. She's currently working as a full-time educator at the Language Center at the National University of Education in Ecuador, UNAE. She contributed to the book promoting, engaging, teaching, and developing active learning, effective strategies. 
She has also trained secondary and university teachers in classroom management and information in technology. So welcome, dear Tania. Thank you one more time for your time and your expertise. So go, go ahead. Thank you very much for such a nice introduction. So just let me share my screen. Please do. Okay. Hello, Claudia. Sorry, uh, Gabriel, uh, Gladys in Colombia. Hello. Good morning, Jaimito. Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Thank the you. The pleasure is ours. The pleasure is ours, Gladys. Thanks a lot. Okay. Okay, so thank you very much for uh, inviting me for today's session. And my topic is effective tools to promote reading in the classroom. Okay, reading in the EFL classroom. Traditional approaches are still being used in today's classroom. Those approaches focus on grammar and the form of the language. In few teachers have noticed the power of reading in the acquisition of a first and the second language. And why I say on the first language, it is because um, reading is one of the most important tools that we have in order to uh, acquire correctly our first language. And this is uh, something that uh, we haven't worked, especially in my country, uh, we haven't promoted reading in our first language. So many students have um, different problems when they want to express their ideas in their native uh, language. So they have problems uh, when they want to organize their ideas, when they want to write down their ideas, um, even with the spelling of words. So I think that reading, it is, it, it is the, the most powerful tool that we can use in order to promote a, a good acquisition of the first uh, language. If we cannot acquire our first language correctly, it is impossible to acquire a second language correctly. So I think that this is the, the, the difficult part that teachers, English teachers face when they want to uh, teach English to uh, their students because they have many problems in their native language that they transfer to the, uh, when they are learning to, uh, they are learning a second language. So that's why I have been trying to look for tools that we can use in order to promote reading. Um, when I um, talk about these tools, what I want to do is to promote reading habits. Why? Because our students, I, especially in my country, they do not have a reading habits. So I think that very few students uh, read a book in a year. And most, and most of, of the students do not read anything during the year. Uh, unless they, they are kind of forced by their teachers or when they have to maybe take, um, take a test. Otherwise, our students do not like reading. So as an English teacher, I want to uh, motivate my students to start reading. And one interesting tool that I have found in order to do that, it is this uh, platform which is called Common Lead. And Common Lead is a free online library, but this library uh, will uh, help you to do many things with your students. So I will show you. Okay, so this uh, platform was created by, by teachers, for teachers, and it is completely free. And in this platform, you will find different kinds of texts, and for all of the levels from, uh, I think, third grade up to 12th grade. The advantages that I have found with this platform is that you can pre-assess your students and, and see if 
what are the level of their reading skills. So when I started using this platform, I used this, the plea assessment that they have there, in order to see what is the level of my students before uh, assigning them the texts. Then you can choose, according to the level of your students, you can choose different kind of texts for them, and of course there are different levels. And one interesting, interesting thing that I have found here, and I think it is very useful, is that you have formative assessment throughout the, the semester or throughout the school year. So uh, once you assign a text, the students will answer different kinds of questions. And this is another thing that I like about this platform because it is not just that, that kind of questions like multiple choice questions, true or false questions that uh, we mostly use in our classes, but uh, this uh, platform includes uh, other kinds of questions that make uh, our students to think a little bit uh, deeper. And then we have the post assessment, uh, which will help you to see the progress of your students. So you uh, started in a point, right, in, in a certain level, and at the end you will see if your students uh, get a higher level or they kept the level. So this is very important. Another thing about this platform is that you can create your classes so if you, have, you work with different groups, you can create your groups in this platform and assign different texts to them. And once your students um, read or, uh, or answer the questions that you have assigned uh, to them, uh, you, will, uh, you will get a report. So you will see your students' performance in the class performance, of course. And you could also see um, how your students uh, perform in each uh, kind of question. And another advantage of this platform is that the, your students develop critical thinking because, as I told you before, this platform do not just include uh, the regular uh, multiple choice questions that uh, students will find in a textbook, but there are uh, different kinds of questions that uh, makes students to think uh, a little bit uh, farther and out of the box in order to uh, be able to uh, choose the correct answer. It is not just a, a kind of a true or false questions or if they have to look for a specific information. They have to focus on the whole test. They have to understand the main idea of the text in order to be able to uh, answer the questions. And at the, the last question of each um, assignment is a discussion question, which helps them to express their ideas about the text. So they are developing reading skills, but at the same time, writing skills and speaking skills. And, and in some cases, there are even videos that they can watch and listen so they they will have a lot of information before uh, doing the discussion. So this helps them a lot. And I think that uh, the students feel a little bit more confident when they get to the discussion because they have a lot of information. At the beginning, the students are kind of shy. They do not like to share their ideas. But once they uh, start reading and reading and reading and they are in contact with the different structures of the language unconsciously because they are not thinking about grammar or spelling or if they are uh, reading a text in present simple or in past simple, they are just focusing on the information. So that, that helps them to uh, kind of feel relaxed at the moment of uh, the discussion and they do uh, they are not afraid of making mistakes because we are not focusing on grammar this is the first tool and i will show you later how to work with this tool and the other tool that i have found really interesting is this one which is called epic and this is an online library but i use it a little bit uh, different 
So Epic is an online library and you can find books for different levels and for different categories. It is designed specifically to be used in schools or high schools, but teachers use it in higher education as well. So um, as uh, Jaime said before, uh, I work at a university and I have used this uh, platform with my students. And I really like this platform because they will find uh, different kinds of books uh, about different topics and uh, for different levels. And here they will choose the, what they are reading. So I have these two tools. Uh, one, uh, Common Lead, I use Common Lead when I assign reading. And I use Epic when I want my students to read uh, by themselves. I want them to choose what they read. So uh, Common Lead allows teachers to assign different kinds of texts to their students depending on their level. This platform helps the students to make reading a habit. And this is the first step to promote the FVR, which is free voluntary reading. And free voluntary reading means reading because you want to, and you want to, sorry, you want to without a book reports, what you want to without book reports or any kind of accountability. So this is a by question. So the first step that I take is to introduce reading to my students with common lead. And once I notice that my students uh, are starting to read, in, uh, to read and read, I introduce the other uh, platform and I m encourage my students to start choosing what they want to read. At the beginning, it was very difficult because, as I told you before, um, students in my country do not like reading. But then I get uh, some students to start reading by themselves. So I will show you how I have been using this platform. A, a question, Tania, may I? Yes. Uh, when you are talking about students in Ecuador that don't like reading, which is the same in Peru, <laughs> uh, you're talking about school students or university students? In general. I, uh -huh. I, I, I have been working in elementary school, high school, and, and university. And I have noticed that in any of those levels, students like reading. And that's why, for example, I have noticed that the students at university level, they do not know how to write words in Spanish. And it is because they do not read. They just write what they listen. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay. So let me show you the... the first one. Okay, this is Common Lead. This is the first tool that I was uh, talking about. And as I told you, it is completely free. So you get access to all of the texts that they have uh, in the storage here. Uh, if you go uh, to browse uh, content, you will find hundreds and hundreds of texts. And here you can filter uh, the text according to the level or the is type of... Is it free, of... Tania? So, yes, it is completely free. Okay. Yeah, uh, you have access to everything in this platform. And so you have text, you have text uh, sets, themes, book pairings, uh, supplemental units, and the different grades. So you will find text for uh, third graders up to 12th graders. And of course, you can choose the lexic range, uh, the number of words that you would like your text to have, the genres, the themes, and 
many other things and, and even the language because you can find a text in Spanish here so if you want to um, maybe if you are a, a, a social study teacher and you want to uh, use some of the texts here in this platform you can use it in, because you can you will find text in Spanish too so this platform could be used for English teacher and for the other subjects teachers another thing that you can do here is that you can create your classes if you have different groups you can create a class for each one of the groups and you can track their progress separately so for example here I have my classes and I, I can track what uh, they are doing so I have level 4, level uh, level 2, level 4 and level 6 in the number of students in each level so you can uh, create uh, independent classes for each one of your groups then you can assign readings and, and at this moment I don't have any reading I think but for example here I have three so you can assign a, a reading in this case I have assigned a, this a text to my a, university students and this text is for the third graders in the United States so you can see that the level of my students is not as high as they it should be so the here you can see the the class average and it is it has reached the 69 percent and you can see the grades here and if you want to get kind of um, more detailed report you can go to the assignment report and here you will see the performance of your students the highest scores the lowest scores who needs a little bit more of uh, help uh, the achievement of the class and of course you can see how uh, they did with each one of the questions so if they get the answer or not if they did uh, the, the assignment or not and of course these are the other kinds of questions I will show you later but in this kind of text you will find two kinds of questions uh, we have the guiding questions which are the regular questions that you will find in a textbook and then you will have the assessment questions which are uh, a little bit um, I think a complex kind of questions and here you can see if they get the, the answer or not so uh, the, 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 the answers will depend on what they choose in the first question so the first que they, they will have some options in the first question and the second question uh, is based on the first question so if they found the correct answer for the first question and if they found uh, the, the, the correct answer for the second question they will get the grade otherwise the, the, the question will be no and in the question six is always the written question so they will have a question and they have to write uh, the answer so we you will have here the report you will see how your students are doing in with the reading as you can see this uh, reading is for a third grader uh, in in the united states but i have used it for my uh, students at, at the university and as you can see um, for many students it was a challenge to uh, complete the assignment so the the reading uh, level of my students is really low so I have to work hard in order to help them to develop their uh, reading skills if you want to um, let's see compare your classes you can also compare your classes here I have my classes and you can see that the ones that are in yellow are the ones that are having a little bit of problem with their assignments 
And the ones that are in green is the, the class that have kind of a better, uh, better performance than the others in their assignments. I, I suppose, Tania, sorry, that the type of questions are objective? Yeah, I, I'm going to show you now a, an assignment so you could see the kind of text that they are reading. Thank you. So if anybody I, has a question, Tania, we can interrupt. Yes, of course. Okay, yes. if anybody here in the audience has a question, please feel free. Okay, so I will choose a text I, for graders. I guess Raj was going to ask you something. Raj? I think um, you have to create an account to access this as a teacher. Yes, okay. yes, you have to create an account. Okay. Okay, this is the text for uh, the third grade. And you have the thematic unit in which you will find more texts or you have kind of just a simple texts. So it depends on, on you. Let's see. Let's choose this one. And here in this thematic unit, you will find many texts. If I have this one. Okay, this is the text. As you can see, it is not too long. But I think that for a university student, this text it will be appropriate. So what can you do here? We have been uh, on this pandemic. Uh, in, in, it has been uh, difficult for some students to get access to internet. So in that case, you can download the the text, and you can send the text as a PDF for your students. So this is the first thing that you can do uh, if you want to use this platform. Or oh, one of the of the advantages of this platform is that you can download the activity. Let's see. No set. And you can share this activity uh, via WhatsApp or maybe uh, by mail or as we were doing here, we printed uh, the reading and then we shared uh, the hard copies with our students. So this is, I think, one of the advantages that I have found with this platform that allows you to download the texts. And if you don't want to use uh, this platform uh, to do the activity and you are working on another platform like Google Classroom or Moodle and you want your students to get the material there, you can download the text and then upload it there and your students will do it and you will have the answer key here and, uh, when you need to check uh, your students' uh, answers. You can share you can see uh, the students preview so how your students will find the assignment in their accounts uh, another thing that i like about this platform is that the students uh, will uh, be able to listen to the reading and this will help them to acquire also a pronunciation that, that's important tanya because when <laughs> students read they all they also want to know they also want to learn how to pronounce words and read paragraphs. Exactly, exactly. So this will help them a lot. And they like doing this because sometimes they feel lazy and they just like to listen to the text. So they use this. Address to the Commonwealth Club of California by Cesar Chavez, Let's 1984. Cesar Chavez, 1997 to 1993 was a Latin American civil rights activist who strongly advocated nonviolent tactics and unionism in order to make the struggles of Mexican-American farm workers. And here uh, the students can uh, make uh, the, the reader to go a little bit uh, faster or slower or at normal speed. So this is another advantage about it. Oh, great, great. Uh -huh. 
Uh, well, this scene, uh, for example, they can translate uh, the, um, the text to for very Spanish. Lazy students. Yeah, uh, <laughs> to Spanish or maybe another language. And when they click here in this uh, icon, they will see the text in Spanish. And this helps them when they find a kind of new words or new expressions that they don't know. Uh, so it is easy for them to find out this way. So they will understand the text better. And uh, if they want, when they are reading and they need to highlight uh, important information in their text, they can use this uh, tool. And they can highlight maybe keywords or I don't know why what is happening here. Don't worry, it always happens to the best yeah. speakers. Yeah. Well, they can they can uh, highlight parts of the text which they consider important. And throughout the text, they will find the guiding questions. Let me see. So they read and they will have the guiding questions. For example, we have question number one here. And this is uh, these are the normal kind of questions, so multiple choice question. Which of the following is not an issue in the farm workers community as mentioned in the text? So they have to read the first part of the text and then find the answer. Uh, normally, there are kind of three to four guiding questions. These questions are not greater uh, uh, because this is just kind of a guide for the students. So these are not greater, graded. And here we have uh, the assessment questions, which are these ones are graded. And as I told you before, these questions are not like the regular ones because these uh, questions requires students to think to analyze the text they uh, they are not just looking for a specific information but they are looking for the whole uh, idea of the text so for example the first question says uh, part a which of the following best explains why Chavez includes the story of Raceros in his speech introduction and they have here the options um, so they need to read the text again and again uh, and try to get the the idea in order to select the correct answer so it is not just looking for a specific information but for general ideas for the whole view of the text these kinds of questions there are mostly a uh, one to from one to seven questions in this case i have 10 questions but mostly from one to seven and all of the questions are connected so the students have to be very careful when they choose the question for uh, sorry the, the answer for question one and question two and we have that uh, last question which the students have to uh, write the answer so how does Chavez uh, utilize the uh, repetition in his rhetoric to make his argument cite uh, at least two examples to support your answer so as you can see it is not a regular uh, question they have to think they have to look for the information that they are going to use uh, to support uh, their answer so it requires a lot of concentration uh, and also uh, to look for many details in the text so they will use the text they will read and read the text once and once again because they need to look for those kinds of information so it's not like reading a text in a textbook. They read the text in the textbook maybe once or twice in order to get the answer. But here they have to concentrate on the text. They have to read over and read it and read it in order to get 
the answer. And at the end, we have the discussion. In the discussion, we uh, start by presenting a video, and the video is related to the text. The students uh, read the video, uh, make notes, and then they answer to this question. What does Chavez say about social revolution? In your opinion, what makes social revolution a powerful force? Explain your answer. So they need to get um, the material, the information that they will use to back up their answers. So when you use this platform and when you use this uh, kind of text, your students will kind of um, take advantage of everything that you have here because they have to read the text, they have to use the tools that they have there, they have to make notes, they have to watch the video, they have to get information to uh, back up their answers. So it is a full uh, kind of activity. It is not just answering a multiple choice question, but they have to do a lot more. Anybody has a question here so far? Or, or a comment to make? No? Okay, thank you. Go on, Tania. Okay, uh, if you want to sign, for example, you, you think this text, it, it's appropriate for one of your groups and you want to assign this text. So you have here this button. And this is a kind of interesting because you can choose one or all of the levels to do the same text. Let's suppose I choose just this level. And I as I, remember that I told you that um, we can use the pre-assessment in order to see our students' level. Here you can differentiate the assignment because it, you know, in a, in a class, you can have students from different levels. So you can assign this uh, reading for certain students that you think uh, it will uh, be beneficial for them and look for another reading for maybe uh, students who have a higher level. So here you can choose if you want to uh, assign for all of the students or just for uh, some of the students. So you, here you will see the list of the students and you can choose the students that you want uh, to read the text. Then you can uh, set the start date and the due date, uh, also the assessment options, only the multiple choice question, which, which are the guiding questions, only uh, assign short answer questions, or do not assign a assessment questions. So you can choose here what you want to do with your students. Assign all assessment questions is the recommended one. And then you, let's suppose you choose that, that you day and you assign. If you choose a, just some of the students, the assignment will be a, assigned for those students and you can choose another text for the other students. So this is another thing that I liked about this platform because you can differentiate uh, the assignment for the same group of the students. So let me go back. And, well, uh, some minutes before, someone was saying that we need to open an account. And yes, you have to open an account. But as I told you, it is free. Uh, the only uh, requirement uh, to open an account is that you have to open an account with an institutional mail. Ah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Otherwise, otherwise, you won't be accepted. No, if you want to use your personal email, you won't be accepted. That that okay. is the only requirement. Okay. And then you get access to everything here in this platform, but you have to use your uh, institutional mail. Uh, sometimes uh, I don't know why, 
uh, even though you use your institutional mail, you cannot open the account, but if you go to uh, the help desk, they help you really fast uh, because I wasn't able to open my account with uh, my institutional mail from the university and I asked uh, help to the, the help desk and they helped me really fast. They, uh, they uh, authorized my email to be used in order to uh, open an account. So if you have problems with your institutional mail, when you want to open an account, just go to the help desk of the, of the platform and they help you really fast. Okay, Tania, Gladys in Colombia has a question. Go on, Gladys. Thank you, dear Jaimito. Uh, okay, uh, Tania, uh, for sure I think that this tool is so interesting uh, and also I think that I, I really want to explore it and also use it uh, with our students because uh, um, so as you said, this is very important that we include uh, reading in our class, uh, in, in our classes, you know, because this is a, an important way to, to reinforce, to motivate our students learning. And in many cases, we need tools like this in order to, to work in class. And uh, also, really, I appreciate that, for example, persons like you are working um, in, these, in these aspects, you know, also exploring, looking for tools, because this is very important in order to also to improve our teaching, right? Well, this is so, so nice. I really appreciate that. Also, uh, I have a question. I don't know if it has uh, a limit, you know, a deadline to use the platform. And thank you for, for sharing with us this uh, information. Thank you, Gladys. Uh, thank you, Gladys, for your, your comment. And no, there is not limit. Uh, as I told you, it is completely free. You can uh, create as many classes as you need. Uh, you have access to all of the features here in the platform. So that's why I really like working with this one because, um, well, you can do whatever you want. You can create your classes. You can assess your students. You have access to all kinds of texts. Um, it, if you are using a textbook and you, I don't know, in your textbook are talking about traveling or technology, you can look for those kinds of texts related to those topics here. So you complement your textbook and that's why I, I really recommend uh, this platform. Thanks a lot, dear Tania. Thank you. Okay, so this uh, this platform, I, I use it when I assigned readings. But as I told you before, what I want to reach is that my students read by themselves, that they enjoy reading. Because as question says, this is the, the, the way that our students will acquire a language and will acquire all of the components of the language. Because when they read, they are acquiring vocabulary, uh, structures, uh, they are acquiring, uh, they learn how to use the correct punctuation, how to connect ideas. So in order to do that, I use another platform that I mentioned before, which is called Epic. This platform, well, it is free for teachers, but it has some limitations. So what I like about this platform is that it is really uh, colorful uh, you have these plans and this is the basic one. Your students will be able to read a book a day. So they choose a book and they can read that book uh, in a day or if they haven't finished in a day, they can continue the next day. But they have access just to one book. That is the, the limitation that they cannot explore other, other books but they have to choose one book and then start reading that one and finish that one in order to choose another one. As you can see you can get access to this platform for free but it has some limitations. 
Okay, uh, let's see and what I want you to, to know about the basic plan. Oh, no, it is, sorry, for scrolling and scrolling. There is some information about this platform that I want you to know before uh, going any further. I don't know what happened with the information. Okay, but there is um, a limit, okay, the, here. There is a limit. Uh, all of the teachers can get a free account on this platform. But what uh, happened? is that uh, the teacher will have access to the, uh, to the platform in a certain uh, schedule or time <coughs> from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. After that time, uh, students cannot get access to the platform. That is the only problem. Then do you know why, Tania, they do that? Uh, because uh, this is not a, a free platform. They have plans. But the free uh, features that they, they offer uh, are uh, open for the teacher and the students just in that uh, uh, time. Okay. So 7 to 3 p.m. And then the students can access to the platform uh, through their cell phones or computers or tablets. That is another thing uh, that uh, it is good about this platform or in the case of the commonly they can do that too but in this platform it is uh, more friendly so here is my class you have to create uh, your your account using your institutional mail too in this case i haven't seen or i haven't heard of any problem uh, when creating the the accounts but you have to use the institutional account. Uh, you can also create uh, your groups here, but uh, the thing is that uh, in the case of Common Lead, when you create a class, you share the link of the class and the students uh, link to the class, connect to the class or join the class. But here, the students just join using this code as you can see here, uh, above this blue button, this is my class code, and all of them get together in the same session. So I have to classify them manually. That is the an, uh, a drawback that I have seen here in this platform. Uh, then, when you uh, when you can uh, track what your students do you can see if they read or not and here you will see that it is very difficult to get your students uh, to read these uh, are my uh, university students too and you will see that very few students uh, read uh, voluntarily they have to <laughs> They have to uh, kind of be assigned a book in order to read or a, a text. But when they, uh, when you ask them to read voluntarily by themselves, they do not read. So let's see what is happening here. I want you to see. Okay. So here. Okay. Here you can see how much time they have read and when was the last time that they were active in the platform so as you can see it's they have kind of a uh, five months and in, the, in within these five months they have to choose as many books as they want to read and it, these are the students that have read <laughs> the most uh, one hour and 20 minutes as you can see here one hour, some just read some minutes. Uh, Andrea is the one that who have read a lot. She has finished four books. Adriana Carolina, she has finished 44 books, but uh, it does um, it didn't mean that uh, sorry, it doesn't mean that uh, she has read uh, 44 uh, books in nine hours. Those books are kind of very short. 
So that's why maybe they, she read these uh, books for small children. Ah, okay. Yeah, so you can see here how many books, how much time they had, they have spent reading. For example, Christian uh, has re uh, had read uh, five books and has spent 6.2 uh, hours re uh, on reading. So you can track what your students are doing. You can also assign uh, books to your students. Well, here I have an, uh, any book. And here you can see uh, what is the, the time that the class, in my case I have 138 students who have finished 662 books and they have read uh, kind of 244 minutes in total. So you can have that information here. I have enforced my students to read books. I have just encouraged them to choose what they really want to do and to read. Um, you know, our students are different. They have uh, different um, interests. So that's why I want them to choose what they want to read. And here you will see, uh, well, the topics and the subjects that you can, uh, in which you will find uh, books. So English language arts, you, you will find different kinds of books for this subject or science art. You, you have also books for, for that subject, social, uh, social emotional learning, social studies, math, languages. Do you find books in other languages too? like Chinese, French, and Spanish. I don't know what happened with this page. It is too slow today. I think it's my internet. <laughs> okay. Let's see if I can log in now. Let's close these ones, maybe that's why. Okay, now you can see the, the books, they, they are very colorful, there are different kinds of books, and even they can, uh, they have all your books, and here you have the levels. In this case, we have just books for uh, pre-K up to sixth grade, but I have used it with my uh, university students. If you, you, if you look for uh, the third grade, you will find uh, interesting uh, sections of books like, um, well, I have here uh, some books uh, in some recommendations. For example, this one. And as you can see, it's really nice. So they are very colorful. And if you want them to listen to the book, they can also listen to the book. So they will practice listening too. Tonight, when I looked under the bed for my monster, I found this note instead. Gone fishing, back in a week, Gabe. 
What was I going to do? I needed a monster under my bed. How was I supposed to get to sleep if my monster was gone? So you can see they can listen to uh, the books are really colorful. It is kind of having a, a real book. Okay. And, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. And you can also assign this book to your class. Uh, you can, um, they can even take a quiz about the book. You can create your own quiz or you can uh, try a community quiz, which is, is maybe some teacher use this quiz with uh, his or her class and that teacher created a quiz so you can use it with your students too because the quiz is public. So let's see, when you assign, let's suppose you want to assign this clue, uh, this book, you have here the name of the book, you can write the instructions for your students, the starting day and the due date, and uh, you can also um, choose if you if you want your students to take the quiz uh, for this book so this is really useful for you if you want uh, to use this platform in order to promote reading in your in your class and you want your students to read a specific book for example and then you can assign to a class let's suppose you want to assign to a class Well, I haven't chose the class. You can share the link of the book. If you work with another platform and you just want to share the link, you can just copy the link and post it in Google Classroom or in Moodle. And if otherwise, you can just ask your students to read the book. The students read the book and they can choose, uh, they can take the, the, the quiz. And what I have done with this platform is that I have asked my students to explore uh, the books that they have here, and they will uh, they they choose a book that they really like and that they, they uh, think they could read, because even though these books are for children, uh, some of them are very challenging for uh, my students, for example, which are in uh, at the university. But maybe for some of my students, some books could be very easy. So they they are free to look for books that challenge uh, challenge them. And as I told you, you if, if you want, you can assign uh, the books to your students. So you will find a lot a lot of material here uh, that you can use. Uh, you cannot download the books here. No. You cannot uh, have access to all of the books either. As I told you, uh, there are some uh, features that are free, but there are some others that are paid. But uh, if you want, you can take advantage of the free features of this one because they really uh, like these kind of books. And another thing that I have done is that uh, there are uh, some students who are mothers so they have worked on reading the stories to their children in English. So they choose this kind of pre-K books. And I told them that they have to read a, a story to their children. So they choose one book, for example, this one. And they have to start reading to their children. So as you can see, they, are, they have kind of simple sentences. They can read, they can look for new words. Maybe they have pictures and they share time with their kids. So that is another thing they have done with my students. If you have any question about this platform, please just let me know. Can we have the, the links of all the beautiful and wonderful? Yes, of course. Okay. Yes, of course. Thanks a lot, Tanya. Mm -hmm. So I will share the links uh, in the chat box for you.
And if you have any question, uh, and I will also share my email if you want to, I don't know, make a, an extra comment or maybe ask uh, any question uh, or give any suggestion, please uh, feel free to write to, to, to me and I will share my mail. Thanks a lot, Tanya. We got just a reminder, we got 20 more minutes, uh, Maria, sorry, Tanya, and then 10 minutes for extra questions or comments. Okay. So there you are. The links. And I will share my mail. Okay. And another thing that I want to share about this is that, well, it was difficult for me to make my students start reading because they do not like or they didn't like uh, reading in Spanish. So it was, they hate to read in, in English. So it was a challenge for me to uh, make them uh, start reading. Uh, so at the end, I have to assign some books for them. And, and, I, uh, and of course, I try to uh, kind of uh, praise the students who were reading. And here you can see, for example, I told them that if they uh, read at least uh, five minutes in a week, well, they, I, 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 for example, I did just simple things like mention the names of the students who have gotten the five minutes in a week. So let's see if I can find, okay. Okay, for example, as you can see, there are few students who really read. And you can see uh, uh, here that the week from uh, July 12 up to July 18, there are few students who really read. This was uh, voluntary, uh, voluntarily reading. And you can track how many minutes each one of your students have read and you can see what books they have chosen. For example, Brian have uh, had, uh, read 25 minutes and he explored two books. If you click here, you can see which books Brian read during that week, okay? So for example, he chose Hard Hat Cat and he read that book for 32 minutes. So I think this is an, an advantage for you because you can see what types of books your students are reading, how much time they are spending on reading, and in, if they have finished reading the book, okay? So for example, here you can see that Brian uh, read Nelly Nutgrad book. He spent uh, 24 minutes in that book. He took the quiz and he got 83. And he explored uh, one book. So because you know that because he had spent or he spent one minute in that book. So that is another, uh, I think, advantage of this platform. So you can track if your students are reading or not. And in order to motivate my students to read, I try to praise them, I try to to mention uh, their names in class. Uh, we have discussions about the books they read. They talk about the books they read. They liked the book, they didn't like the book. It was a challenge or not. 
So as you can see, at the, at the beginning, I have kind of, in a week, I have just one or two students from the 138 students that I have in this class who read. But now in the, in the week from uh, June 14 up to June 20, you can see that I have more than one, more than, let's see, kind of more than five students. As you can see here, there are some students who read regularly, but there are some others that just read once a, a week, but at least they are reading. So as you can see, there are more students. I haven't assigned anything here, as I told you, because I want them to start reading by themselves. I don't want the, uh, your, uh, my students to feel <coughs> pressured because I want them to enjoy reading. So that is what I have been doing with this platform. I know that I can assign a book but I think that if I assign a book, they won't uh, enjoy what they are reading. But if they are start, uh, if they start reading little by little, and if they are able to choose what they read and to explore different uh, categories in, in the reading, I think that they will kind of find uh, this uh, feeling. They, they, they will really like to start reading. As I told you before, I think that reading is one of the most important tools that we can use in our English classes. I have seen progress in my students, even though uh, there are many students who still do not read. But when I have assessed them in reading using the readings from the textbook, I have seen that they have performed uh, better that, uh, than when they just read the, the text from the textbook. So I have seen changes. Uh, even, uh, I, I am still working on this platform. Um, I want to reach uh, that, that goal that my students read by themselves, uh, that they find uh, reading important. And this also will help them to develop other skills that they will need to to acquire uh, English as a second language. And I don't know if I, I have presented two tools here. I have presented two tools. I don't know if you would use these tools in your classroom, how would you use them? And maybe you have another idea. No, we will, first of all, we will check them and, and see what we can do. Uh, uh, what I've seen, what I see is that they are very useful. They have lots of different topics uh, that, that they can uh, check their understanding and they can follow. And you as a teacher, you can follow what they are doing, the type of literature they like, and the grading, and that's important because uh, they can do it by themselves, as you said. Mm -hmm. So we thank you for these two tools. We will try them and we will let you know. I don't know if somebody else wants to say something else. Uh, good morning, my name is Miriam. Hi, Tania. Hello, Miriam. Where are you from, Miriam? I'm from Ecuador. Oh, welcome, dear Miriam. Okay, Tania, I don't know if you remember, but we met when you were studying in, in Kansas University. So the question is the, that I am trying to, to get an account and in Epic, but there is a part that I don't understand. I, know, I don't know if you can help me. It says yes. reading level system and it has some letters, A, R, D, R, I, A, D, R, A, F and P, G, R, L, and Lexile. I don't know what uh, what do they mean. Can you explain me, please? Okay. Yes, yes, I will do that. Just let me open Epic again.
Okay, I also would like to take advantage of this opportunity to say thank you, Tania, because you, as you said, our students uh, don't want to learn and they don't like reading. So um, thank you for sharing those ideas, those um, uh, tools that we can use um, for trying our students get um, more hours on reading. It's difficult to, to get them read even in, Span in Spanish. Uh, so we really, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Miriam. And, and of course, I remember you. We were a kind of a partners when we were studying at KSU. So these are the level um, uh, reading level system. We, we do not uh, use them here in Ecuador. They use those levels uh, in the United States. And let me see if I can explain each one of these. So we have here See. I've got a, 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 a let's see I got a, a kind of a chart for those let me check While you do that, uh, Tanya, may I have a comment, Jaime? Yes. Sure, go on, Irma. Okay. Well, we still got 10 more minutes, Tanya, just remember. That's okay. Um, well, I want to thank you first, Tanya, because you're sharing these two very important uh, platforms. And I truly believe that you're making a change, even though your students are starting to read even five minutes per week. That's a lot if you compare a student that never have read before. And one of the things that I like about these two platforms is that, you know, buying books, it's expensive. So having access to a lot of possibilities of books in the two uh, platforms makes a change. And yes, um, we also have to recognize that we as teachers have to model. So if our students see us with a book, that means that we think. And sometimes we do have to motivate teachers to read books, you know, not more than one week and, and a year, but more than that. So I'm, um, I'm happy to learn from this webinar. And um, unfortunately, I don't have an institutional email, uh, but I, I can see all the potential of all the two platforms, the possibility for students who don't have the money to buy any books, uh, the possibility of choosing and discovering <clears throat> yourself the kind of reading that you like. Because if you have never been exposed to a book, and if you don't read most of the time is because you are not even clear on the kind of reading that you are going to, to enjoy. So going from childish, even though, yeah, I saw a couple of, uh, you know, in Epic, but, you know, reading about a monster under your bed, it's, it, it's funny and it's a way of tiding and, 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 and it's motivating even for adults. So thank you very much, Tanya, for showing us this platform. And I'll let you keep working on the schedule for, you know, grading the student. Thank you. Thank you, Jaime. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, I couldn't find the, the chart that I have for this, 
but these are kind of reading levels that they are used uh, in the United States. The first one is accelerated reading, when in, it, it helps us, uh, teachers to um, kind of assign students different levels of readings. Uh, these are other kinds of systems that I am not sure how they work, but I have used this one, uh, which is guiding a reading level. So I think the, if you want to choose any of these, you may choose this one because I think this is the one that adapts to uh, our uh, reality because you have to guide your students through reading through the through their level. So they start from the easiest book to uh, the more challenging one. So I think this one you can use or you can choose this Lexile, which is the number of words that you uh, would like to have uh, in your in your books. So but I really recommend this one. The GRL. Thank you very much, Tanya. Okay. okay, and finally, uh, well, someone was saying that didn't have the, the um, institutional email. Institutional email. But in this case, uh, I I think that maybe if you ask for 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 help, they could help you. If you said you are a teacher and you want to get an account, uh, they could help you because uh, in the case of Common Lead, they are really open. They have been very nice with me uh, when I have uh, had trouble opening my account. Um, so maybe you can check with them uh, if they uh, allowed you to open uh, your account using your personal email. Maybe you can check that with them because they are very helpful. And let me see another thing that I wanted to tell you is that if you want your students to join your class, the only thing that you have to do is uh, to uh, share with them that these three steps that they have to follow. Okay, so the first thing is that they have to go to getepic.com students and then they have to enter uh, the class code. So in, in your, each teacher will have a, a different class code. So you share this with your students and uh, beforehand you have to uh, register your students in your class. So let me show you how to do that. Ah, here. So you are in the main page and you have to add students. Uh, you can choose the level uh, for your students. I always choose their level, but if you want to choose a different one, uh, you are free to, free to do that. And then you can uh, write uh, the first and last name, or you can copy and paste from uh, Word or from Excel here. And then you can uh, register your students before you share uh, the class code with them. And then you, the students, uh, they have to uh, follow the steps, which are the three steps, uh, introduce the class code, and they have to look for their name because they will find kind of a list of students. So they have to find their name and they will get access to uh, their personal account. So they, they do not have to, to do more than these three steps. So it is pretty simple to get your student's account and your account too. So this is uh, basically the most important thing, which is the uh, class code. So these are the two, thing, the two tools that I wanted to share. And well, as I told you, uh, my uh, goal is to help my students to uh, get more reading during my classes and, and use reading uh, in order to help them acquire a second language because they are in contact with all of the elements of a language. They are in contact with Lexel, they are in contact with grammar structures, with spelling, uh, with punctuation they will learn how to organize their ideas. They can, you can use, uh, for example, if they read a book, you can ask them to retell the story. 
so they will um, develop in their speaking skills and of course uh, organizing information in order to be able to uh, retell the story so there are many uses that you can uh, give to this tool so these are the two tools i hope you find them useful and thank you very much uh, jaime for your invitation today no thank you dear tania for your great ideas excellent tools and the most important your time with all of us on a sunday morning i know you have a family to take care of but in spite of that you decided to give us part of your time so before uh, your, your your final words just a reminder please remember next saturday sorry next sunday we have our 58th International English Online Meeting. This is the round table with Mercy Linda, Andrea, Maria Teresa, and Gladys from Colombia, Argentina, Guatemala, and Bolivia. And the three men, Jose Obando Arroyo from Ecuador, Julio Valladares Pacherre from Peru, and Marco Aparicio Fernandez from Mexico, who I think is present now. Yes, he is. So thank you so much, dear Tania. Anybody who wants to thank, thank hello, Marco Antonio, nice to see you hello. and meet you. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. Nice thank you very nice much for the invitation. So, no, no, thank you, please. Uh, I hope you enjoy this presentation today and you are ready for ne next Sunday uh, to share some of your expertise and ideas about uh, Lengua Inglesa programs in the universities in Latin America. Thank you very much. Thank you. So somebody who wants to express your gratitude to Tania, please, or a final comment. Hi, me, hi, Mito. Thank you, Gladys, Colombia. Hi, Col you. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is so much. <laughs> this, for me, you are Mrs. Colombia. <laughs> hi, Mito. Thank you. No, just uh, really, I enjoy. Uh, it was a very good uh, talk, I think. Thank you, Tania, a lot. Uh, so I think that for me, my, my homework is going to be explore these platforms and Definitely. sure include them in our daily teaching. I really appreciate uh, your time and everything. Thank you and for sure, see you next Sunday. Yeah, uh, and we may write to you, Tanya, we have a, a, a doubt or a question, right? Thank you so much. Anybody else, please, in Peru, in Ecuador, in Mexico, in Colombia, anywhere well yeah, i just it, wanted to say thank you again to tanya for introducing these two platforms at least for me i didn't know anything about it and they are very useful yeah so me neither me much. neither now our job irma is to explore them and and try and try to get a, an account yeah we have job we have a work <laughs> to do now Th thank god we have job <laughs> true anybody else please well, I enjoyed uh, I? this presentation. Sorry, I enjoyed no, this presentation Marco, and then because, Maria uh, because uh, every time, uh, probably every day or at different times, we uh, are discovering different tools now on the internet, uh, and these are very practical tools for for students who usually always need a variety of activities. Thank you very much. Yeah, and especially if somebody else has done it, we can ask her in mm -hmm. this, time, this time, Tania, right? Maria Teresa in Bolivia. Thank you. I think the, the, this was a very interesting topic because all of us have the same problem, just encouraging students to read. Like you said, the first language or second language is very complicated for professors to encourage students to uh, read and try to understand what they are reading. Thank you. And I think the, the tools provided will help us overcome some of the problems that we mm -hmm. have. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Jaime. Thank you, 
everybody yeah. Yeah, for thank, sharing thank, thanks, everyone. your knowledge I, I, with us. I, I, yes, and you know something, something funny, Maria Teresa, that maybe you have all noticed. When we publish a, a, a flyer or some information for teachers in, in Facebook or Instagram, whatever, the info is there in the flyer, mm -hmm. but still teachers ask <laughs> more info, please. <laughs> and, yes. and I say, what's going on here? They do not read, they do not understand or, or what? Yeah, and, and reading, it's a big problem, not only for students, but also for us teachers, dear Maria I, Teresa. I know, you're, you're right. Here. Okay, yes. thank so you very much for okay. sharing this information <laughs> with us. Your final words, Tania, please. Final um, words or last words? I always made the mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe Irma, the final or the last one? <laughs> the final okay. words, right? My, my closing words. Well, your closing words. <laughs> okay, uh, well, I really appreciate, uh, Jaime, your invitation. It, it is really uh, rewarding to be here, uh, to be listened by these very, I think, uh, knowledgeable uh, people here in our session. I am very proud to represent uh, my country because I know that there are uh, people from uh, different countries here. And what I would like to, to, to get from this presentation is that we can uh, start working as a team in order to improve the level of English in our countries in Latin America because you know uh, the level of uh, English uh, in our students is, is very low, so I would like to to get these uh, people working together in order to to reach this goal to improve uh, the level of English in our countries. Well, thank you so much, Tania in Ecuador, Irma in Ecuador, Micaela in Peru, Marco Antonio Aparicio Fernandez. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you in Mexico. Maria Teresa in Bolivia, Gladys in Colombia, Liliana, Janet, Manu. Miriam Núñez, also in Ecuador, Jose Lobo in Colombia, Lucila Soldevia and Cynthia, and everyone else in Facebook Live. Take care, uh, wear your mask, don't forget, wear your mask, and see you next Sunday on a beautiful, wonderful, and enriching uh, international meeting with uh, coordinators and directors of the English language program in different universities. Goodbye, everyone. Bon appetit. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miriam, Miriam, you Take want care. to say something? Yes, I didn't know that next uh, Sunday you are going to have another meeting. So I would like to get the link. Uh, well, uh, let me, let me, let me write my, my, um, my may, WhatsApp, my WhatsApp. Or may I can ask Tania? Okay, yes, but just in case, just in case, mm -hmm. uh, Miriam, I wrote my WhatsApp number in the chat. If you copy it, please. Okay. Okay, or in Facebook, I, I always publish, I always post the, uh, the link. Okay, thank you very much. No, thank you. So, okay, once again, bon appetit, and it's time for us to cook or do the washing up. <laughs> thank you, <Maggie. laughs> Doing the laundry and lunch. Bye. Thank yes. you. Thank bye, you. bye bye. Take bye bye. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye.